I bring greetings from Ibadan. Uh, from the headquarters, missionary headquarters of our church. And from all the officers of the church. I want to appreciate the leadership of um, CSC Youth Fellowship. Pastor Guiro, Pastor Oke, and all members of your team uh, for the good work you are doing for the Lord in Christ's Apostolic Church. May the Lord uphold you to the end in Jesus' name. And I want to thank you for the beautiful introduction of mine that you did make a uh, few minutes ago. Whatever that has been said concerning me, whatever that has been said concerning me, uh, will return all the glory to God Almighty. Like I said, while I was praying, it has always been by the grace and grace of God alone. And uh, we have nothing to accredit. All glory must go back to God. So glory be to God. And I want to thank all of you for coming here. Thank you for identifying yourself with the Christ Apostolic Church. Uh, when we see uh, the younger generation uh, like yours are uh, coming here worshiping the Lord identifying with uh, the Christ Apostolic Church uh, it gives us a kind of uh, hope for the future and um, I want to admonish you to please um, keep on keeping on don't go out we invited um, Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo to a conference in England sometimes, sometimes last year. And I said to our people over there, he said, let me say it in a, that's, that's, I'm quoting him now, he said, let me say it in a pure Yoruba, uh, words he said emobode yes and also la wu la rin awuju awon eniyan ni be bipe e gbo nkan mo fe so yi ede yo ba ma so o si so bipe don't move out and now that's what uh, we are telling you please stay inside e kan na ni a ba yin so lowo lo bayi pe e du o sinu adu um when the Retired General Buhari, our ex president, came on board as military head of state way back in 1983. He said something in his maiden speech. He said, Nigeria is the only country we have. The only one. He said, We are going nowhere. Say we're going to stay here and salvage it together. That's our resolve. Our resolve too in this church. Um, there will be winds, there will be tornadoes, there will be all sorts of storm. But um, let us stay within and salvage it together. Um, 
I'm standing before you today as a living witness of what God can do, how God can see his people through the storms of life, ministerial storm and things like that. So don't be afraid of storm of um, strong winds of some billows stay and the Lord will strengthen you praise the Lord praise the Lord now let me just um, share with you a few words from the scripture and that's to be found in the book of Daniel chapter 1 from verse 8 I read um, it's a popular one but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself now god had brought daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs and the chief of the eunuchs said to daniel i fear my lord the king who has appointed your food and drink for why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you will endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Nazariah, Please test your servants for ten days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our parents be examined before you. And the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies and as you see fit so deal with the servants so he consented with them in this manner in this matter and tested them 10 days and at the end of 10 days their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and give them vegetables as for those four young men god gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom and daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams now at the end of the days when the king had said that they should be brought in the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before nebuchadnezzar you know the story it's a common one the bible says we have been surrounded by a cloud of witnesses um, there's nowhere you go on earth that you don't see the sky you see the clouds whether you are here in nigeria or ghana or you're in Casablanca, uh, you are in Honolulu, in Hawaii, wherever you go in this world, you look, look up, you see the skies, there are the clouds. You are surrounded by these thick clouds. And the Bible says, uh, we are being surrounded. We have a cloud of witnesses. And when you look at the Bible, uh, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and even in church history, church history, either ancient or contemporary, you will see that there are these uh, men and women of God who serve to us as cloud of witnesses. And all these witnesses are around about us. Uh, they are not there to witness against us, but to urge us on, to encourage us to keep on keeping on. Because whatever we are going through today is what they've been through before. And 
and so nobody has any excuse not to be what God wants you to be here on earth and that God is not going to accept from us any excuse for not becoming the type of Christian he wants us to be and that one of the witnesses uh, with which we have been surrounded today is the man whose story we have read from the book of Daniel chapter 1 Daniel Daniel one of the witnesses of God for us but who in the end may serve as God's witness against us if we will not live up to God's expectation for our life as Christians? Remember I said to you that these witnesses are given to us today. You know, if you go to any court of law and uh, you are accused of something, uh, there will be witnesses for and witnesses against so these witnesses we are talking about uh, this cloud of witnesses uh, uh, with which we are being surrounded are now testifying for us not against us but the time comes the time comes at the end of life's journey that they may want to rise up to testify against us that's why uh, one of our hymns uh, says it all in Yoruba uh, what? Ma Shora. You know, they are not testifying against us now. They are testifying for us, urging us on. But if care is not taken, if you are not going to heed their advice, if you are not going to follow after their pattern, the time comes at the end of the day that they may rise up to testify against us. If a rich man, a rich person, uh, you will see that uh, among those uh, witnesses uh, there, are, there, there are those of them that are rich they had it if you talk of money uh, riches wealth while they were here they had it all so you cannot say it's because i'm rich that I'm not able to stand uh, for God. Uh, those people will rise up and say, Yes. At the end of the day, they will say, Yes, Lord, we are here. We too are wealthy. We were rich. We, we, we stupendously uh, rich. And, but that did not stop us from knowing you, from worshiping you, from serving you while we were there on earth. <laughs> Uh, we have the likes of Joseph of Arimathea, we have the likes of Nicodemus, and so on and so forth. They were so rich. And uh, they serve the Lord. And uh, if I say it's because I'm poor, we have many of them that were poor, uh, including Lazarus. Lazarus was poor, but the Bible says when he died, the angels of God transported him to the presence of God himself. If you are talking of education, Paul was highly educated. Look at a man like Paul. Paul was a man of tremendous personality. Uh, 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 if Paul were to be alive today, it could be compared to an American. See, he had it all. 
let, let me say something about, about Paul. Yes, quickly. Paul was uh, a Roman citizen. Then a Jew by birth. And uh, a Greek by education. And uh, you know, being a Jew, he was a Roman citizen, a Jew by birth, and a Greek by education. And uh, when you, uh, you, you remember when our Lord Jesus Christ was uh, crucified on the cross, the Bible says. The inscription of his accusation was there hung uh, over his head there on the cross and it was written in three principal languages in, in Greek, in Latin and in Hebrew. Why? And Hebrew. And Hebrew. You know, those were the three principal uh, languages of the world then and now uh, it was written in Hebrew. That is the language of religion and paul was a jew and hebrew and uh, it was written in latin that is the language of power the romans the roman language and that uh, paul was a roman citizen uh, it was written in the language of the Greek, uh, uh, the Greek people, a Greek language. That's the language of culture, of civilization, of education. And Paul was a Greek by education. So he had this uh, intimidating, intimidating uh, uh, CV. But with all this, one day on his way to Damascus, he fell down under the power of God and he became converted. He became a Christian. A man who was highly educated, that highly educated, he fell under the power of God. He was a scholar and he knew the Lord. And, and yet today, this morning, I read uh, the book of First Peter and I began to think of Peter. Peter was not that educated. He was not, he was not that educated. He didn't have this high education, but yet he knew the Lord. So if you say it's because I am an illiterate, that's the reason I cannot serve God. Peter we may rise up against you on the day of judgment that yes i was an illiterate yet i knew the lord so we are saying here today that no one has any excuse uh, before the Lord not to know the Lord. So Daniel, as we all know his story, is one of those witnesses for us now. Who was he? Just who was he? I'm asking you. Just who was Daniel? Who was he? Daniel was a boy of high school age. High school age when he and uh, some of his colleagues were forcibly, forcibly, they were uprooted from the land of Israel, forcibly removed to a foreign land, Babylon. Daniel uh, so uh, uh, um, you know that when you are of that age that's when that's when life is budding life is budding that's when 
uh, one could say, yes, um, I'm, I've got to live life to its fullest. The strength is there. The muscle is there. Today we have so many young ones of high school age who are going about living in solitary lodging away from the prying eyes of their parents. Today we have the influence of drug, of alcoholism, of cultism, and every, everywhere today. And that is when uh, uh, young ones, uh, when we, they are confronted with all this, they say, yes, uh, this is life. Let's, let's enjoy life to its fullest. You know, the temptation of the young ones anywhere in the world, um, white or black, green or blue, American or African, the temptation uh, before every youth is to want to live in the present. That is it. To live for the present, to live in the present. Um, anytime I talk about this man, described in the Bible as the demoniac of Gadara. Let me You know, there were certain things the Bible talks about concerning him. One, he had some demons. He, 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 he had evil spirits. Two, he was living in the tomb in the cemetery he was not dead but, li but living among the dead another thing about him he says he had been bound with chains and fetters another thing about him Bible says Many times he had had to break those chains and fetters. He was an incorrigible personal. For no one could tame him. The Bible says, and everywhere, every time you see him on the uh, hill and everywhere, uh, shouting, crying. And another thing about him, the Bible says, he was always lacerating himself with any available sharp object, cutting himself, and blood will be gushing out, oozing out of his body. And that's the condition of so many youths here in the world today. They have the age. They have the strength. They have the power. They have the freedom. But you know that there are many youths all over the world today who are very much comparable to that demoniac of Gandhara. What about them? They are demon possessed. Demons of cultism, of drug, of alcoholism, and all sort of things. Demons, demons, demons. And the Bible says that demoniac of Gadara was living in the tomb, not dead, but living among the dead. He was not fit to live among decent people in decent society. And that is what some youths do today. The Bible says, whoever 
that is given to worldliness is dead while alive. The Bible says concerning this demonic of Gadara that he was always uh, bound with chains and fetters. And today, when you look at people, youths, they may come to church, but they are be, sometimes they are nothing, uh, they, there is something about them than that they are being bound by chains and fetters of religion and of religiosity. They are members of the choir, members of this society in the church. They've been baptized, they, 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 they belong to this society or that society in the church. But this is nothing but being bound with chains and fetters of religion and religiosity. Today, as you are here, ask yourself, are you, are you a youth for Christ? Or you are just being bound with the chains and fetters of your church, of your, of your religion, of your parents, and so on and so forth? You know, those things cannot help. And the Bible says, concerning this man, he was incorrigible. Nobody could tame him. That tells us that religion does not save. Religion cannot save. Churchianism cannot save. Religiosity cannot save. And the Bible says concerning this man, the Bible says this demoniac of Gadara was always shouting, crying, shouting in the night, in the afternoon. Today, wherever you go among the youths all over the world in america in europe in asia in uh, every everywhere to australia in africa in nigeria where do you go today that you don't hear the cry of the sinners you hear the cry the shout of sinners uh, on the radio on the television in discotheque in wild parties in sex orgies and things like that this these are the things that youths use their life for they want to live in the present they want to live for the present on the radio on the television listen to some music today this is nothing but the shout and cry of sinners and the Bible says it was restless restless that's it was restless and that's one thing you know you know you know yes shouting crying but the rest he was looking for was elusive you couldn't find that rest and that's one thing, there is no rest for sinners there is no rest for those uh, who patronize some uh, 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 nightclubs, some parties, some uh, 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 red light districts of any town. No rest for them. And now, you know, today, you know, uh, uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life, when they have been enjoyed, by the sinner uh, the sinner is now angry with himself because those things will bite back that's what happened to that demonic of gadara the, the, those things bite back and he was always shouting crying and yet no rest there is no rest for some people for some youths here on earth as we're here this afternoon 
Think about yourself. The Bible says, but when he saw Jesus, he ran towards him and Christ exorcised him. All those demons were sent packing. Jesus the Bible says and he was in his right mind there are youths today all over the world who have lost their minds they've lost their minds I listened to a preacher Way back in 1979 or so in the United Kingdom. He said he used to know somebody, a young man. He said, but later on, um, they parted ways. And, um, he was a son of a preacher. I said, when he met him, he said, what happened to you? He said, yes, I know I used to go to church. I used to be involved in religious activities. But I don't know what came upon me. I lost my mind. There are youths all over the world today who have lost their minds. But in the midst of this uh, the cesspool of corruption and uh, ungodliness that we have today in the world we have the example of a man a young man of high school age daniel who had proved to us that uh, it is possible to stand for god in the midst of the ungodly society we have found ourselves that by the help of God with the help of God a teenager uh, a young person a youth can live a pure godly holy life in this world one thing about Daniel was that uh, his devotion to God was early, early in life. He started early. I remember what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Remember your creator when now can you say now when when these are not my words this is what the bible says remember the lord god your creator now and this is the language of the bible the bible uses the language like uh, now today today now now today no no procrastination no postponement of decision for Christ. You want to do it, do it now. You want to love the Lord, love the Lord now. You want to serve him, serve him now. You want to worship him, worship him now. Whatever you want to do, do it now. Pray now, fast now. Do all sorts of things for God now. Because tomorrow may be too late. <laughs> I didn't know that Pastor Guiro would say something about, about me and how I started early 
but when, when I enter into this hall uh, this afternoon and as I finish praying, I sat down and then looking at you, young people for God, I said, Lord, what of if I had said no to you when I was only 13? Uh, 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 yes, going to 14, about a month, about a month less than 14 years. I was still, uh, yes, it was, it was correct to have said 13. I, and I said to myself, what, Lord, and that is what I always feel when I come to this hall, during pastor's conference and all other conferences. I, I would say to myself, Lord, what of if I had said no to you? You know what? Don't get lost because God has some duplicates. God has duplicates. <laughs> uh, the Bible says somewhere about uh, about you know when the when the um, potter when he, uh, uh, the man of God went to the potter's house and he saw the potter walking walking on some uh, lump of clay he was trying to fashion something out of that lump of clay but the clay kept cracking 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 in the hand of the potter the Bible says and the potter just left off that particular lump of clay and he took another lump of clay because our God is a God of another. Mm. Uh, God of another When the message of God was delivered to that king in the Old Testament You know, the Bible says The man of God read All the promises and the threatenings of God uh, Unto his people Israel He read it, this is what God would do God would judge you. God would do this. God would do that. The Bible says the king was by the fire warming himself. It was during winter time. And uh, when the king had listened to everything that was said in that scroll, in, uh, in the scroll, okay? I walk in the scroll where those things were written. The Bible says the king just said, bring me the scroll. And he cut, the king took his scissors, cut the scroll in pieces and threw the old thing into the fire the Bible says and the word of the Lord came unto the prophet and said to him yes the king had just burnt that particular scroll but you my servant take another scroll and write the same thing there why because our God is a God of another <laughs> and when Judas fell from his privileged position as one of the 12 apostles of Christ, he fell having sold his soul to the devil. He fell from that privileged position. And the Bible says, concerning him, it has been said in the book of Psalm that his position let another man take. Why? Because our God is a God of uh, what? Eh? Another. 
Nigba ti juda si, eni to ti ta okan re fun ibi. Ti o subu, o subu, o subu gan ni ta ki oro fe gba si agudo awon omo Olorun. To subu ti o ko laarin awon eyan Olorun wa ko a bi le wa ko nipa re pe a bi ko nuno we samu pe e je ki a fi ipo re fun awon eniyan. So ipo re ni ki elomiran ki o gba. Elomiran ki eyan miran ki o gba nitori po Olorun je Olorun miran. If I had said no to God at that age, 13, God would have made use of another. Daniel was very young when he was brought to the royal court. A very young boy, Daniel. But you know what? Before he was brought back, he had already been established in the Lord. He had formed character. The Bible says in verse 8, he purposed, he purposed in his heart. He had formed character. He was well rooted in the Lord. And how does one get rooted in the Lord, if not by His word? That's why we're talking about uh, proving our growth, proving our Christian maturity through sound doctrine. He was already sound from home. All the Ten Commandments, uh, all the words that God spoke on Mount Sinai kept reverberating in his, in his, uh, in his, in his ears and all the three Hebrew children uh, he remembered with his uh, colleagues that God said at Sinai that thou shall have no other God beside me I am your God no other God and these words kept reverberating in the hearts and ears of a man a young man like Daniel he knew that the whole of Sinai protested against all forms of ungodliness and immorality and wickedness and things like that before he went to the royal court he had formed character like joseph in the house of potiphar Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you this. I don't, I don't, I don't scare people. I don't scare people. I don't want anybody to scare you me. Don't scare me with prophecy, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with prophecy, with anything. I'm not scared. Don't scare me. The Bible says the gifts of the Spirit are to comfort. To encourage and so on and so forth so I'm, but I'm, I'm saying this i don't scare you but there are certain harsh realities of life life is full of crisis there will be crisis it was a crisis in the in the in the in the in the life and during the life and times of daniel living in the king's palace it was a crisis it was a crisis for joseph to live in potiphar's house you are going to meet with the crisis of life anybody that promises you that it won't happen it's not telling you the truth life is full of crises or crises and uh, whether we like it or not we are going to meet with some of this crisis of life Last Last crisis, you know, the Bible says there is trouble on the sea, it cannot be quiet. That's life.
The crisis you are going to meet in the future, maybe financial, maybe economical, maybe political, maybe spiritual, maybe religious, maybe social, you are definitely going to meet with one of the crises of life as you traverse uh, this uh, world. As you go from here to Ibadan, to Lagos, to London, to America, you are going to meet with crisis. But then, like Daniel, if you have formed character, if you have been steadied in the Lord, you've been established and rooted in him, you'll be able to stand up, you stand up to that crisis and you overcome. <laughs> that's why we're saying it is best to know the lord during your early days your early years you know crops crops are planted during planting season but any crop that is planted after that season uh, no matter how uh, fertile the soil is no matter how favorable the weather is no matter the care and the uh, diligent uh, 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 cultivation uh, the, the careful and diligent cultivation put up by the farmer there is no way that can, that kind of crop will come to a uh, normal fruition because it will have been too late that's why we say you want to know the lord do it when let us rise let us rise i want to go <laughs> There were things that um, Daniel stood to lose if he compromised. There were things he could gain as well. He could have gained some favored position in the king's court. He put his life in jeopardy for the sake of the master. I want us to pray this afternoon. Pray to the Lord. The power, the grace that sustained Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel wasn't an angel, was he? He wasn't. Our fathers, they had lived in this world before. Not far from this spot, just down there. Was when he heard the Lord speaking to him audibly from heaven. Baba was only 24. Only 24. Baba Olushe was um, um, one of the disciples of Apostle Babalola. And he's told us so many things about Baba. Baba, you know, he was a virgin, a virgin at 24. So don't say it's not possible. Others have done it. Grace had worked for them. The same grace is available today. You are going to pray. Lord, I will live for you. 
I will live for you for your glory for your kingdom I will live for righteousness for holiness for that which is straight just of good reports strengthen me O Lord shall we turn it to prayer this afternoon In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Sometimes, when I watch people pray, if I begin to tell you now of how to make it in life, how to become, start a business today, become a millionaire tomorrow, how, um, uh, if I give you some, some 20 keys that can open the Central Bank of Nigeria and ask you to pray after that, I know some of you will jump and your head will almost reach the, the rooftop. Well, I, I'm persuaded that there are some of you here this afternoon who have been ministered to. But I'm saying the key is to know the Lord. Seek ye first. This is not my word. The kingdom of God. And this kingdom is not, it's not about eating and drinking. It's about righteousness. Peace. And joy in the Holy Ghost. You don't have that, you have nothing. That's the key. Knowing the Lord. Standing for God. We are praying again. Lord. I will live for you. I will not live for the present. I live for your kingdom. I live for that which is about eternity. I live for you, for you, for you. Uphold me, O Lord. Turn it to prayer again this afternoon. In Jesus' name, we pray. Fanny Toku for me. Oh, Fanny Toku for
so this afternoon I pray that the grace and that power and that strength to live for God and for him alone to live for his glory to live for his kingdom the power and the grace to live for righteousness for holiness to live for that which is just and true and of good report the Lord will endow you today in the name of Jesus the strength to be able to navigate the troubled waters of life the Lord gives to you in the name of Jesus the strength to overcome all the temptations of the youth the Lord grant you today in Jesus name so shall it be go in the strength of the Holy Spirit and live for God serve the Lord worship the Lord know the Lord love the Lord the strength to uphold the banner of the gospel and of the truth the Lord give it to you you will not fail you will not fall you will succeed in life the Lord will fight your battle you are triumphant you'll be overcomers you are successful in all areas of life you are prosperous so shall it be and at the end of life journey may you and every one of us reign with Christ you have celebrated this year next year by his grace you'll be here you continue to dwell in the house of the Lord forever from the house of the Lord you will not be uprooted the Lord will establish you stabilize you so shall it be I pray for you in Jesus wonderful name Wow.